Welcome to my Docker tutorial. We're going to create a simple node app. I'm going to start by doing yarn add express. And then I'm going to confirm the Docker daemon is running. I'm not going to cover that here. So we have no containers running as shown in Docker PS. So let's create our container. In my Docker file, I'm going to say from node latest. The command is going to say node source index. And I'm going to create a Docker compose.yaml and it's going to be version 3 which is the latest version at the time of this video we're going to have an app service build dot is going to mean use our docker file we're going to mount in our source folder as a volume and we got port 3000 there and in our index file we're going to go ahead and load express and define a hello world route and expose that on port 3000 and as you can see i got my index file here in the source folder and if we go here to the terminal and just run docker compose up dash dash build dash dash build. That'll go ahead and build the Docker container in the Docker file and it looks like we've got an error here. I forgot to move the package JSON and node modules into the source folder so I'll just do that quickly here on the terminal. So now that things are in the correct place let's run dash dash build and we see attaching to Docker app 1. That means our Docker container is running and any log output would appear here in the terminal. Right now there's no log output, but let's go here to another terminal and go ahead and curl localhost 3000 and see hello world, which is hitting our hello world route that we just created. So great, we got our node script running up in Docker here. And what happens if we change this and hit it again? We see it did not update. Why is that? Well, it only ran the code when it started. So if we want to use nodemon to live reload that, we can go ahead and change this to nodemon over here and stop this and it is stopping the docker app and go ahead and build that up it again with dash dash build and uh oh we got an error why is that so we did not <clears throat> actually load nodemon into our environment so let's do that now so we're gonna run npm install global nodemon uh, you could put that in your package json as well i just did it here and we're gonna go ahead and change that to nodemon and run that and we see nodemon starting so now if we come over here and save this, we see it did reload automatically for us. Great. So let's go over here and we're going to curl and see hello world. And then we'll change this and curl it again. We see hello world one, two, three, it live reloaded. Now we'll go ahead and switch this back to node instead of node mon. And we'll put in our Docker compose node mon because we want to create a separate development and production environment. So in our development environment, we'll run nodemon. And uh, for now, we'll put that as a command in our Docker Compose to override the normal command node that comes with our Docker file. So now if we rebuild things, we get nodemon because the Docker Compose overrides the command. So we can still change this and it live reloads just as before. We'll go ahead and stop that. We'll make a copy of the Docker Compose.yaml and we'll name that Docker Compose.prod.yaml for production. Here's where you can define any production specific settings like custom ports and environment variables. So in production, we don't want to run nodemon and we don't want to mount in the volume. We want to bake that code into the image so we can ship that image to production. And I'm going to leave the port in here so that the operations people or SRE team, whatever your company does for DevOps, can go ahead and customize the ports and add their environment variables. So they'd pass hyphen F and then pass in the prod.yaml and they get the production settings. And if you don't pass the hyphen F, you're going to get the just the regular Docker Compose, which is the development settings. So one last step is we need to go ahead and switch the directory here. Uh, I forgot the command, but for the present working directory, so I'll reference the documentation and see it's workdir. So if I go ahead and add workdir here and fix the path to be in the source folder, and I add a run npm install, That'll install the node modules as part of the build process, which creates the node modules. And then we're going to add those to the Docker image. So that gets baked in with our code as well and gets shipped along with our code to production, which keeps the dependencies uh, kind of fossilized so things don't get messed up later. And uh, we'll go ahead and build that. And as you can see, it's running npm install node mon inside the container. Uh, it's running npm install. And then it's going to add the node modules into the container. And as the last step, it's going to up and run the command node source index. 
And so we can see command node source index running and it's attached and any log output would appear here. Right now there is no log output. So if we go over here to the index and change that, we see it does not reload. It does not live reload. Uh, so as you can see, I'm making changes that's not live reloaded. We're running a production ready container, so to speak, one that you could ship off to production and it contains all the code and dependencies baked in there as one deployable container, which is the main benefit of Docker. And if we remove the production flag on there and just run up, we'll get our development environment. So you can easily switch between environments. So now we have Nodemon running in there. And if we make a change, that will live reload. So there you have a production ready environment and a development environment. And you, as you can see here, it may take a moment to restart or I fixed the uh, port number here. And uh, we have our container back up and running because Nodemon restarted it and we can make an update and that is live reloaded in our development environment. Gosh, do I say live reloaded enough? Uh, and then here we're going to create a docker compose dot override, which is typically where you would put your development settings. So in there we're going to run node mon and, and mount in the volume and in the docker compose you would just have your your basic services defined with nothing environment specific. Uh, so in the development we're mounting in the volume in the Docker Compose, we define the services, and in the production YAML, we can define any production specific settings. So I had mentioned environment variables. Let's go ahead and add that now. So I actually do a typo here, uh, but you create an environment variable section, and uh, let's actually put that in the, uh, the override. So environment debug equals test, and in here, we're gonna try to console log out process.env, which is our environment variables in node, and then debug, which is what we named our environment variable. And this would be good for passwords or database credentials, things you don't want to hard code in there and, and share. Uh, it might be a production specific setting only certain people have access to who should still be able to work on the code. Um, and let's see, because I typoed env, it should actually be environment here in the Docker Compose YAML. And if we run that, that'll inject the environment variable into the container, which we can then access in our code to, again, avoid hard coding any passwords or uh, environment specific settings. So that's the preferred way to inject secure secrets or passwords, API keys, etc. So if we change that, you see you do have to stop and up again, and then it'll pick up the new updated environment variable. Now, if we hit that again, we see the updated value.